Dang it. All right, take two. Hey guys, it's Wahima, but just call me Wah. Melanated! Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Morning Tea, where we sit in our sleepwear and discuss current events. Today's tea is Earl Grey Crim by Tavana Tea. I would like to make a clarification to the statements that I made in my last episodes regarding Bill Cosby. I really like it when you guys challenge me in the description box. Um, I had a really good conversation with Bohemian Princess regarding the Cosby matter from last week. I don't want to diminish the value or diminish what it means for him to receive a guilty verdict. I think he's absolutely guilty. And if you've watched my channel, you know that I think he's 100% guilty. To me, being an actor, being somebody who would like to have the influence that Bill Cosby had in his career at some point in my career, a tarnished reputation is like devastating. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not saying that it's okay that he didn't get guilty because it, it already tarnished his reputation. I'm saying that's just another thing that happened that is a direct result of that that should have happened. So random thing, I met Phil DeFranco at VidCon this year and I was so, I didn't, like sometimes you meet YouTubers or sometimes I meet YouTubers and I'm just like, oh, you're really cool, that's really cool. But like to meet him and be like, oh my God, I wish I had a crew of people to help me do what he does so I could present you um, the facts and the issues the way he does. I really like his show. He has some definite, definite opinions I do not agree with, but I love the fact that he attempts to come at us from a very moderate and neutral place, seeing both sides, and I appreciate that. Here's the tea. All right, so remember in 2012 when this Colorado baker decided that he didn't want to bake a cake for a same-sex couple? Well, now the Supreme Court is going to hear it. I mean, that's literally five years ago. I'm going to read a little bit from Fox News so that you can see the series of events and how it happened and decide for yourself. So in July 2012, while shopping for a cake for their upcoming wedding, a couple went into Masterpiece Cake Shop. The bakery owner informed the couple that he did not provide cakes for same-sex weddings and celebrations due to his religious beliefs. In December of 2013, a judge in Colorado said that the bake shop violated a Colorado law which prohibits businesses from refusing service due to a person's sexual orientation. May 2014, the Colorado Civil Rights Commission decided at a public hearing that Masterpiece had violated Colorado's Anti-Discrimination Act. In August 2015, Colorado Court of Appeals ruled that Phillips cannot cite his religious beliefs in the refusal to provide a service to same-sex marriage. In 2016 of April, the Supreme Court denied to hear the appeal from, from Phillips. In 2016, a conservative right-wing nonprofit legal group, uh, Alliance Defending Freedom, petitioned to have the Supreme Court hear the case. In June 2007, the Supreme Court agreed to consider to hear the case next term. I understand that people have their religious rights, but I don't think your religious rights include you being discriminatory, especially when it comes to something like um, same-sex marriage. And, and also, I think that if you're somebody who bakes cakes and wants to give joy to people on their special day, it's really odd to me that you would deny certain people that right. A public business, and he is discriminating against people in his public business, and you just can't do that. This is an extreme example, but if a Hasidic man and woman were to have a bake shop, a cake baking shop, where they really only do specialty, like Jewish cakes, I don't even know if that's a thing, but like, what if they only did that? What if they only did cakes that served the Jewish community, right? So in that instance, you can say, okay, they're doing that and it isn't discriminatory. It is, but it isn't discriminatory based on things that people cannot help. And I guess if you believe that homosexuality is a choice, then that's where we're gonna split on this conversation. So like, I'm not gonna go into the Hasidic, Hasidic bakery to get a wedding cake when they don't make American wedding cakes. They don't make traditional American wedding cakes. Maybe they make cakes for bat mitzvahs and maybe those are a little bit different. But if you're making traditional American wedding cakes and a couple comes in and asks you to make them a wedding cake and you tell them you can't because of your religious beliefs, like you're being foolish and you're being outwardly discriminatory. A person is coming in paying you for a service. You can't tell them that you're not gonna help them with that service because they're a same-sex couple and you don't condone that. Like, who are you? I think, And I also think maybe that's why the Supreme Court has been denying wanting to hear the case. Because if the Supreme Court rules in favor of the cake shop, 
The Supreme Court is ultimately going to set a new precedent in the law of the land stating that people can, because of religious beliefs, discriminate against people. But it doesn't fall under religious freedom because you're affecting someone else and you're also selling wares in a public forum. Here's the tea. In South Africa, there is a trial to do to start for two white men who allegedly put a black man in a coffin and threatened to pour petrol over it and burn it. I mean, it's crazy though, because like, when you think of South Africa, most people don't understand what apartheid is. So basically apartheid is like Jim Crow laws for the entire country of South Africa. The Dutch came in and took over South Africa. This is why Nelson Mandela fought um, and all these, all these civil rights leaders fought in South Africa to free it from apartheid because these white people just came over there, these Dutch whites just came over there and just like took over and put laws on them. They couldn't walk on the same side of the street as a white man. They couldn't um, marry interracially, just they couldn't like, you know, so there's a whole, just generations of South Africans who like are not in top positions in South Africa due to apartheid. And when it fell in 1991 and, um, Shortly thereafter, Nelson Mandela got out of prison and became president. Like, you know, when all those things happened, it was such a big deal. But, you know, the people of South Africa are still, this next generation is the next hope. So for this to happen, like, and 1991 is not that long ago. Like, we got rid of, in the U.S., we got rid of Jim Crow in the 60s, right? Well, you know officially. And so for this to happen is such a heinous hate crime. And I hope that these men go to jail. I mean, I hope it's not like it is here where it's like, you know, you could just do anything still to black people, especially if you have a bad. Um, and I really hope that this is resolved. Here's the tea. Okay, so Martin, I don't know how to say this name, Martin Shkreluk. So this guy, Martin, I can't say his last name. He was the CEO of Turing, Turing, Turing. He was the CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals in 2015, and he raised the price of an AIDS medication from $13.50 a pill to $750 a pill, just because he could. That's how we really know him. But in a separate story, there's allegations against him for the company that he founded and the second company he was CEO of. Uh, that he had like a Ponzi scheme and he would change the numbers of the company's like profits when he was talking to the shareholders um, to suit his needs because he was actually stealing from the company and he was paying off his own debts and having an, an extravagant lifestyle. So he's like skimming money off the top and docking the books so that it looked like they were making a certain amount when they weren't. And so he took a lot of money, like I think $11 million between the years of 2009 to 2014. So he's on trial and he is like a smug little bug like he literally is just smiling during the trial and I hope they throw the book at him and I hope he gets the maximum penalty if he gets convicted then he's gonna get 20 years in jail and I absolutely hope he does because I I mean just for the raising the price of the AIDS pill like what an asshole like what an asshole Here's the tea. So here is the biggest story that I heard all throughout the week is, week is that Donald Trump is saying that he had a victory with the travel ban. Um, so the issue with the travel ban is it was just like a crazy blanketed, if you're from this country and you're Arab, you can't come into the United States type of ban. It was no nuance to it. And if it was nuance, it was very, very slight. And so a lot of people fought against it because it was stranding people who didn't necessarily need to be stranded. And so originally the Supreme Court like kicked it out, but it got taken, I'm sorry, the Supreme Court of New York State and other states, it got kicked out. But then it went to the Supreme Court of the land and they ruled that it isn't the worst law, but here are some things that they need to roll back on. And so Trump is seeing that as a victory and it's just kind of like, no, it's not a victory. It's just a better version of what you should have done, you jerk face. The Supreme Court agreed Monday to allow a limited version of President Trump ban on travelers from most, some, from from six mostly Muslim countries to take effect and will consider it in the fall. The court made an important exception. It said that the ban may not be enforced against foreign nationals who have a credible claim of a bona fide relationship with a person or entity in the United States, right? So this affects universities, this affects family members. They've made it so that it makes more sense for what the travel ban is supposedly for. And the travel ban originally was supposed to be, let's put a ban for people traveling to or fro from these countries 
because we need to make a better immigration policy. And so until then, we're just going to stop immigration from there. And so that's just crazy because it, it's there's no nuance to it. And so this now makes it so that at least people who are obviously not threats, at least on paper, and it, like they makes it also makes it seem like people who go through this process aren't vetted. They are vetted. Like the way terrorism is working now is that you're getting national citizens of you know U.S. born nationals to to do all these crimes. They're not like all foreign. Some of them who are foreign have been here for years before this was even a thing, before 9-11 even. So yeah. here's the tea. So a Seattle pregnant woman was killed by police because they said that she confronted them with a knife. They shot and killed her. I just, why did they have the shooting killer? Like why couldn't they like, here, I'm going to read this. On Sunday morning, just before 10 a.m., two patrol officers were dispatched to investigate a reported burglary at the Brettler family place, an apartment complex where people transitioning out of homelessness. Usually only one officer would respond to a standard burglary call like this one, but police were familiar with Lyles and her apartment. Children inside at the time were not injured, according to the police, who did not say if they were Lyles' children. That is insane. She, like, I don't understand why you have to kill somebody who has a knife. Like, can't you tase them? Can't you just, like, disarm them? Are they going to kill you? Don't you have bulletproof vests on? Like, I'm just so confused. Like, why was a knife worth shooting someone? Aren't you guys stronger than her? Like, I just, I, like, I mean, did they think she was on drugs and so had superhuman power? Like, ah. just so, just don't value lives, man. I'm going to have links to everything that I talked about in this video down below because I'm trying to be super bona fide. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Morning Tea. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic day. Bye. I am so tired. I was at VidCon this weekend. I wasn't even really there. Like I just went on Wednesday and then I went on Saturday morning and then I went to two after parties yesterday and I'm just so tired. So if my energy is low, guys, I am so sorry. I also took my hair out, so. All right, let me edit this video and get it up. I'm so sorry for the late video. Oh, I, I'm i gonna start to do this quote that I put. Oh my God, I was so proud of myself. So I was on Instagram and Cat Black posted a picture of us. Okay, so Cat Black posted this picture. I value my relationships with the bold black female creators in my circle. I love seeing us flourish and there's enough room under the sun for all of us to shine. I put... Uh, yes, cat. be you, be true, and take your place. Like, I, I was, I don't know where that came from. It just, like, inspired. I hope I didn't steal it from anybody. But, so I decided that I was going to say that at the end of my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Morning Tea. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. Join the conversation. And remember to be you, be true, and take your place. All right, guys. Have a fantastic day. Bye.